Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today we're going to do 2014 AMC 12B number 22. So let's first read the problem. In a small pond, there are 11 lily pads labeled 0 through 10. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, da 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 10. A frog is sitting on lily pad number 1. When the frog is on pad number n, it will jump to pad n minus 1, will probably n over 10. So in this case, it's 1 tenth. And it'll jump to the pad n plus 1 with probability 1 minus n over 10. So in this case, it's 9 tenths. And for 2, it's to the left with probability 2 tenths, and to the right with probability 8 tenths. For 3, it's 3 tenths and 7 tenths, and so on like that. So if a frog reaches pad 0, then it's eaten by a snake. If the frog reaches pad 10, then it escapes. We want to find the probability that the frog eventually escapes. So, going from 1 to 10 seems like a really long way to go. So instead, let's find the probability that it reaches 0 instead, i.e. it is eaten by the snake. And if we find this, we can subtract it from 1 to get the probability that it is not eaten by the snake. In other words, it escapes on pad 10. So let's call the probability that it is eaten by the snake when it is on pad number 1 to be P1. So what is P1? Well, if we jump to the left, then with a probability of 1 tenth, then it will definitely get eaten by the snake. However, if we jump to the right with probably 9 tenths, then it will land on lily pad number 2, and the probability of getting to the zero lily pad number 0 when it's on lily pad number 2 we'll call P2. So what is P2? Well, it jumps to the left with probability of 2 tenths, for which it lands on lily pad number 1, and the probability of getting to 0 one on lily pad number one is P1. If it jumps to the right, then it lands a lily pad three with probability P3 of getting to zero. And we kind of see the pattern going on here. Jumps to the left, probability three tenths of landing on lily pad number two, and jumps to the right with probability seven tenths with probability uh, landing on lily pad number four. Again, same thing, 4 tenths landing on 3, 6 tenths landing on 5. And now P5, well, we could keep on going until P10, for which the probability is 0, and then back substitute in all the way to P1. However, let's analyze what happens on lily pad number 5. Note that the distance it takes to cover to get to 0 is the same as for 10. And via these probabilities, we find that it's actually symmetric. The probabilities going to 0 is symmetric to the probabilities going to 10. So because everything is symmetric about 5, the probability of getting to 0 when we're at lily pad 5 is the same as the probability of getting to 10 when we're at lily pad 5, which means that we can get to lily pad 0 or 10 in probability 1 half. So now, all we need to do is to back substitute from P5 all the way to P1, which is half the work, thankfully. And instead of just skipping the calculations and telling you the answer, I'll actually go through the calculations to kind of show you how I would calculate this as efficiently as possible. So first, of course, we need to plug P5 in for the expression for P4. 4 times P3 plus 6 tenths times p5, which is 1 half, so 6 tenths times 1 half is 3 tenths. Now I plug it into p3, p3 equals 3 tenths times p2 plus 7 tenths times 4 tenths p3 plus 3 tenths. So let's look at what we need to calculate. We need to calculate 7 tenths times 4 tenths because we need to subtract it from the p3 on the left hand side to obtain uh, expression for p2 in or p2 in terms of p3 or p3 in terms of p2 so we can plug it in to the expression for p2 so let's go ahead and do that this is equal to 3 tenths p2 plus 28 over 100 p3 plus 7 tenths times 3 tenths and in this case, I'm not going to calculate 7 tenths times 3 tenths because I'm lazy. So now we can solve for P3. So let's see, 72 over 100. P3 equals 3 tenths P2 
plus 7 over 10 times 3 over 10. And multiplying both sides by 100 over 72, we get P3 equals 100 over 72 times the quantity, this is 7, 3 tenths P2 plus 7 over 10 times 3 over 10. And note that I'm not actually going to calculate like with distributive property because, well, you'll see what happens in a second. We plug in P3 for the expression in P2, so P2 equals 2 tenths P1 plus 8 tenths times 100 over 72, 3 tenths P2 plus 7 tenths times 3 tenths. And now we see the advantage of not uh, using the distributive property for this part because this simplifies much easier than if we just distributive property at first. So instead of this, we can have 10 ninths times this quantity. So again, we have to calculate 10 ninths times 3 tenths P2 because we need to subtract it from both sides. And thankfully, this is actually also a very easy calculation because a lot of the stuff cancels out as well. The 3 and the 9 cancel out to give 1 third, and the 10s all cancel out, so we just have 1 third. This is a plus sign. So 1 third P2 plus, let's see, we have 10 ninths times 7 tenths times 3 tenths. I'll actually leave this here because I'm lazy. So now we have the expression for P2 by subtracting both sides by 1 third P2. 2 thirds P2 equals, let's see, 2 tenths P1 plus 10 over 9 times 7 over 10 times 3 over 10, which gives P2 is equal to 3 halves times 2 over 10. That gives 3 tenths P1. And I calculate this instead of leaving it be because the denominator is still 10. So hopefully everything should come out perfectly fine in the end. So 3 tenths times we have another 3 tenths here, or never mind. Let's just write it out. As so. So all we need to do now is plug this into P1 and we'll be home free. So this is equal to 1 tenth plus 9 tenths P2, which is 3 tenths P1 plus 3 halves times 10 nines times 3 tenths times 7 tenths. And what is this? This is equal to 1 tenths times plus 9 tenths times 3 tenths. Again, we have to calculate this in order to solve for P1. Plus 9 tenths times 3 halves times 10 ninths. Oh, look at that. We have yet another cancellation. So this reduces to 3 halves times 3 tenths times 7 tenths. How convenient. And now subtracting 27 over 100 P1 from both sides, we get 73 over 100. P1 is equal to 1 tenths plus 3 times 3 times 7 over 2 times 10 times 10. Now we can multiply both sides by 100 over 73 to get Let's see, P1 equals 100 over 73 times 1 tenths plus 3 times 3 times 7 over 2 times 10 times 10, which is equal to, well, this inside, let's multiply it and turn it into a common denominator. So this is 20 over 100, which is equal to 100 over 73 times 20 plus 3 times 3 times 7, well that's 63, over 200. The 100 and 200 cancel out pretty nicely to get 2 on the bottom, and the 20 plus 63 is equal to 83. So the denominator is now 73 times 2, which is just 146. So is this our answer? Actually not quite, 
because remember that we were trying to find the probability of the complementary of the actual thing that we're trying to find, which is the probability that it's not eaten by the snake. So this is the probability that it's eaten by the snake. So the probability that it's not eaten by the snake is 1 minus, so real P1, is 1 minus 83 over 146 is equal to 63 over 146. And let's go check if this is the answer choice. Indeed it is. So C is the correct answer and we are done. So I hope you guys are having a good summer. Uh, today we're going to be doing some Mandelbrot. Uh, it's a math competition. So I think this is Mandelbrot. It's from the National Sample Test. Uh, 